This right here is my MacBook Pro 16 inch 2020 edition. And this has been my main computer for the last year. It is a fully spec'd out machine and it cost me $5,500. The reason that I have this and not a like dedicated desktop is because I wanted to be able to bring my work with me wherever I go and not having to feel the need to go to the office whenever I have to edit the video. I was really impressed off the specs of the Mac Mini M1 and how good everyone said it was. So I bought one for the office and I've been editing a couple of my latest videos on that machine and I'm really, really impressed. I just want to start this video off by saying, hey, hope everything is good with you. And if this is your first time watching me, nice to have you here on the channel. My name is Peter, I'm from Sweden. But that is not what this video is about. We are going to talk about the Mac Mini M1 and how it actually performs when you work with it as a content creator on a daily basis. So when I bought my MacBook Pro back in 2020, one of the main things that I wanted the computer to be able to do was to handle heavy video files no matter the situation that I was in. And that is also why I spec'd it out with the best things that you could possibly put into MacBook Pro at the time. It has a 2.4 gigahertz Intel Core i9 processor together with 64 gigabytes of ROM and the AMD Radeon Pro 5500 with eight gigabytes of memory. And so far I've been very satisfied with this machine. It has been a true workhorse and I've been doing all my work up until this very point ever since I got it in 2020. But ever since Apple decided to launch the M1 processor, I have been really interested in seeing how good those computers actually perform because I've been watching a lot of videos, seeing a bunch of positive feedback on the computers. So I ultimately had to try one out myself and see if everything was true and if I could actually implement it into my own workflow. And that is why I decided to buy my own Mac Mini M1 here for the office with the initial thought of it actually being like a studio computer, doing like the light tasks such as transferring the files from my computer to the NAS and you know, maybe like start the edit of my videos. But the last four weeks has actually been quite interesting when it comes to using this computer. So the Mac Mini that I bought cost me $1,099 and it is the 16 gigabytes of ROM version because I needed to have something more than eight gigabytes because when you're working with a lot of different programs at the same time, you don't want the computer to like throttle up and like not be able to function. And since I'm using like Google Chrome, Final Cut Pro, Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom, all at the same time, I needed the computer to handle that. And since my MacBook has like 64 gigabytes of ROM, it's never been an issue on my MacBook. It has 256 gigabytes of storage and I didn't feel the need for anything more since I'm mainly working from SSD drives. I always start my projects on the SSD drives and have the library and everything on there so I don't actually use the storage of the actual computer because once you start doing that and the SSD drive in the computer starts to get full, your computer is gonna be really slow and everything is gonna work really bad for you. So if you're not working from SSD drives right now, highly recommend you to do that because mm, so good. And being able to take my work with me from the studio and then plug it into my laptop when I'm going away with my family, that is golden for me. Especially when you're going on longer trips and you wanna be able to edit stuff on the go. It has one ethernet port in the back and also two regular USB ports. But the thing that I like the most in the back is the two Thunderbolt ports because I am a huge fan of having one cable to rule them all. Like being able to have a USB-C cable with Thunderbolt is golden when you're working as a content creator because most of the new tech that is coming out right now actually has Thunderbolt 3 support. For example, this Sony card reader that I got is transferring a full memory card, which is 160 gigabytes in less than three minutes to my hard drive. That is insane. So how good does this computer actually work when you're working with it as a content creator? Well, as most of you probably know, I am a Final Cut Pro X editor and I do majority of my videos in Final Cut Pro, there's very rarely that I jump over to any other program. And it's also a very stable program, which is also one of the reasons why I'm not switching over to DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro, because I wanna have the easiest way to work on my videos as quickly as possible. When you're working as a content creator, videographer, freelancer, one of the things that I've found to be very important is to have 
templates. And that brings us in to the sponsor of this video, which is Canva.com. Canva.com offers you a wide variety of different kinds of templates that you can use for your Instagram posts, your presentations for different companies, or infographics, flyers, Facebook ads, you name it. But one of the things that I think it's very good to use is to create some sort of like mood board or storyboard when you're pitching an idea to your client. For example, if you want to make a fitness video, then you can just write down all the ideas that you got in your head and drag and drop different kind of elements into that entire presentation. And then you can just say, hey, here's my idea. I tried visualizing it for you in this nice storyboard. So let's have a look and then I would love to hear your ideas. So if you want to test out Canva, I'm going to drop a link down below, which will give you 45 days for free. The Mac Mini M1 doesn't have any issues whatsoever playing back the compressed XAVCS files from the A7S 3 in real time. There's no frame dropping. There's nothing that is lagging or falling behind. And it's just an overall smooth experience that makes it so much easier to get started working or keep working on your project. And when you apply like a subtle grade or something else, there is no lag behind. Like maybe you get like one or two frame drops on the M1. But other than that, there's literally nothing that I've noticed that is annoying me or making my work less productive than on the MacBook Pro. It's actually pretty much the opposite because this is working much faster. I'm also able to use all the different programs simultaneously without actually stressing the processor too much. So I'm using Final Cut Pro together with Photoshop, together with Lightroom and Google Chrome and my mail app Spark as well. And when you like switch between the different programs, you can jump in straight into the work that you're doing in that app without actually having any kind of like lag behind. And that for me is just mind blowing. When you're doing all this heavy work on the M1, one of the best things is that it doesn't make a single noise. Like the fan is super quiet, especially when you compare it to the 2020 MacBook Pro, because this is kind of like infamous for being like, whenever you're doing some heavy editing. And I wouldn't actually be surprised if it took off through the roof. For some of you, it might not be a huge deal, but when you're sitting in a smaller room and you want to have your computer on at the same time as you may be recording a video or when you're working at home in your living room and you don't want your computer to disturb your family, that this is a fantastic option because it's super quiet when you're working. And I also tested out some of the plugins that I'd use on a daily basis, such as the M Logo Cinematic and the M Title Cinematic. And on my MacBook Pro, these plugins are working very slow and you have to like render them up before you can actually play it back. But on the Mac Mini M1, you can just drag them to the timeline and they play back instantly. And you don't have to think about like, rendering time you just drag it down there do the adjustments that you want and then it just works which is also a huge step up something however that you need to be cautious of is that not all plugin from motion vfx does work on the mac mini m1 as of just yet but they are optimizing a lot of the plugins so there will be more and more plugins working on Apple Silicon. I do know that there's a lot of you that are working on Premiere Pro and that's also why I decided to test that out on the Mac Mini as well. As of the recording of this video, I do know that Adobe has not released dedicated app for the M1 processor, but that is something that they're working on. But if you're watching this video in the future, then it's already out, I hope, unless something weird has happened. But when I tested it out right now, it actually works pretty good. You can do all your edits in Premiere Pro, but there will be some like playback issues where you're dropping frames and when you're scrubbing through the footage, it's not nearly as smooth as it is in Final Cut Pro, especially if you're working with compressed 10-bit files because that is where like Premiere Pro doesn't really like to work with the files. But when you do it in Final Cut Pro, no issues at all. I am really impressed by this machine and it is way above what I thought it would be and I didn't actually think that I would use this machine to edit my videos, but here I am editing my videos on the machine. And uh, I highly recommend this as a like stepping computer for anyone that wants to jump in to the Apple ecosystem or to the Mac computers because it is a very good computer for what you pay for. It is one fifth of the price of this, but it also does everything that I do on this 
a lot better. And I would love to know your thoughts. Are you going to go for the Mac Mini or the MacBook Pro once it's released? Do drop a comment down below because this is a very, very interesting topic. Va? And uh, yeah, if you liked the video, do give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe and all the good stuff. Va? If you uh, are staying, then I will see you in the next video. If you're just gonna leave now and say like, oh, bye bye, Peter. I'm not gonna see you again. I have a good one. Thank you for watching. Take care. Peter from Sweden. Out!